two mega pops. An achievement in Balloons Tower Defense 6 where you have to get 2 million pops or more with a single tower within a chimps game. And for today's scenario, we're going to be unlocking the secret powers of the balloon incineration. But in order to get that, we need to get the other four upgrades first, including like shattering shells, signal flare, burning stuff, and increased accuracy in reverse chronological order. And to aid us today, we're going to be placing down the one, the only Striker Jones for that explosive immunity, um, what do you call, bypassing of black and zebra balloons. Alongside, actually, we're going to place this down first, a submarine to get us right off the bat. So let us a go. On round nine, place down Striker Jones. We're going to need that um, ability to pop black balloons with the artillery as soon as possible. On round 11, get yourself some twin guns so that we'll be able to have enough money to purchase for Mortal Monkey to begin our quest for the balloon incineration. Around 14, you can place down your Mortar Monkey and then place it along this little square here for maximum coverage at this point in time. Throughout the entire game, we're going to have a pretty small blast radius, but gosh, each blast is going to be oh so powerful by the end of this video. We're going to aim to get signal flare as soon as possible so we can circumvent those pesky camo balloons, starting at round 24. But we do kind of need a little bit more of a reload speed. So we've got a faster reload first. But we will get rapid reload at some point. Now this is... Here we go. Level 5. Makes all black balloons less resistant to explosive damage from all monkeys. This is very key to the balloon incinerations' early game success. Without it, all those black balloons will do is just simply travel across the map and then go to the exit. This is why we're choosing Striker Jones over Gwen. Like Gwen provides some nice upgrades to the signal flare path, but unfortunately when it comes to early game stuff, she does not provide the benefits that we need in order to survive that Striker Jones has. But also, Striker Jones is able to provide all of the benefits that Gwen would provide anyways. Try and get some submerged support as soon as possible so that we can actually start being able to submerge it into the ground whenever we want to. But we still need the submarine out for now. Like, I don't think this is powerful enough on its own at this given point in time in order to deal with all of the balloons. Like, the amount of PS involved, especially on a round like this, is just simply too great. But the mortar is the mortar. Let's see. Let's... We're going to be doing some micro intensive stuff when it comes to like round 40 because we're going to need to reposition the mortar monkey's cursor elsewhere in order for it to keep raining damage upon stuff like Moabs, BFBs, ZMGs, and then finally the bad. Get yourself a alchemist at some point, give us a mission dip, but unlike most other two mega pops, we're going to go for the perishing potions so that we'll be able to fire more shots and the acidic mixture dot dip sorry won't run out as quickly as it usually does so it applies for both the berserker brew and the acidic mixture dip we're kind of all right without the submarine unsubmerged but i feel like at the moment we're gonna still need it at this point in time up until like we get like Berserker Brew and Stronger Simulant where each shell does additional damage. Let's see how it does now actually. So it's dealing with these white balloons just fine. Let's see rainbows. These can be a little bit pesky but because there's only a small number of them the Mortar Monkey is able to deal with them just fine. So black balloons. Because of Striker Jones these Mortar Monkey shells are able to damage these black balloons which is excellent. If it was Gwen we're using for signal flare buffs, then that will not be the case. We'll be having a troubling time against these. Even with the Bernie stuff, the Bernie stuff isn't able to be able to latch onto the black balloons unless there is some kind of explosive means to be able to get through into the black balloons themselves and the zebra balloons following alongside that as well. So where are we now? Strongest stimulant, here we come. 
So each shell is able to punch through two more layers than usual. I think that's how it works, strongest stimulant. Even more buffs like with Berserker Brew. Oh, that one made quite far. Okay, so ceramics are what you call a little bit problematic, but still nothing we can't handle. Let's see, Bunny Stuff doing work. Now, Bunny Stuff will be even more powerful when we get Shattering Shells. And you see the intense incineration of these balloons even after they leave our radius of fire. We're keeping it here, but we will change it constantly for round 40. That's going to be an important round. Also, that's when we're going to use the Concussion Shell as well to just halt the progress. So, Jungle Drums is up. Let's see, take that. Use concussion shells to concuss it. Make sure it's actually we're going to unsubmerge this thing and we're going to change the targeting. Change the targeting. I should use tab actually rather than pressing the mortal monkey itself. Uh, let's see. Do the concussion shell again. We're going to need as many mortars to hit and for you to take as long as possible to get around the track. Uh, let's see, we're nearly there. Ooh, some of them were getting quite far, but yeah, exactly. Excellent. Hitting those zebra balloons are very, very well. And if it wasn't for Striker Jones, we would have to invest in an MIB so we can circumvent our weaknesses of black and zebra balloons with the Mortar Monkey. Also, because of the fire rate of the Mortar Monkey not being particularly high, that means that the strongest stimulant and acidic mixture dip will have a much longer time on the mortar monkey itself. I think mainly the middle path will be the biggest problem since that fires the fastest out of all of them. Like out of all of the mortars, the middle path is one that's fastest firing, so therefore it would run out of the acidic mixture dip the soonest. But as you can tell by the amount that it's firing, the acidic mixture dip is not running out at all. And I think that is also thanks to perishing potions allowing the strengthening of brews and stimulants. It doesn't increase their potency, it just increases the Oh this could be an issue. Yeah, we really need shattering shells. So Striker Jones doing work on his end there. That's why I was placing down here just to clean up anything that's along here. Yeah, we really need shattering shells in order to deal with some of these. Like single flare on its own. It's just not going to provide that damage, that long-term damage that we need. But saying that shattering shells is not far off. And also it's able to defortify anything up until a zero MG. And then from there, it just won't be able to do anything. So it can move the fortifications off of ceramics. It can do it for Moabs, BFBs, and I think zero MGs as well once it gets the balloon incineration. Let's see, shattering shells is there. And you'll be able to see the work that goes to play once the um once the ceramics actually leave our <laughs> radius like the burning stuff is absolutely gorgeous it is flaming hot stuff you see look at that yellows getting instantly popped by the burning stuff because of shattering shells that is excellent <laughs> keep on going okay we're going to need an overclock so we can increase the fire rate of the shattering shells even further. So, and also this is going to do a bit more damage now to the wonderful Moab. Look at this. This is going to do a bit more damage. Also, soon concussive shell won't take as long to recharge, which would be brilliant. So let's just deal with up these sometimes the most healthiest of balloons are not the ones to be fearful of with a mortar monkey it's going to be the speed of a balloon which is going to be probably the more worrying factor how fast it's going in comparison to how bulky it is because sometimes the bulkiest ones are slowest like zmgs like those are the ones that we should try and leave on the field as much as possible Otherwise, we might have ourselves a bit of a troubling time. So, these ceramics, absolutely no problem whatsoever. Like, I am really surprised by how powerful these shattering shells are. Until I actually got around and, you know, experimenting with them. Because thinking the shattering shells is only really good for removing the fortification layer 
off of certain balloons rather than you know the increased damage in this case so we need to change the positioning of the shells so that then we'll be able to pinpoint them there we go Ooh, they're getting a little bit far we should place a cursor in front of them so that the shells actually land on them rather than land behind them or land too far in front of them oh concussive shell was needed there i feel like those balloons would have done a pesky escape there there we go and that concludes round 52. oh we're getting quite far along the track which is not to my best interests but we still got this when we get overclock this is going to be a much easier time what the hell what were you doing mortar monkey why weren't you hitting that single ceramic we're not going for black borders we're just aiming to do this okay so let's see. Oh, oh i thought i thought it was automatically on fast anyways but it's just because of the speed of pink balloons the annoyingness of pink balloons so we should use the concussive shells more often there because that was a little annoying that one single ceramic balloon was so goddamn stubborn but I even forget how to pronounce the word balloon properly. Also, you can use a concussive shell very precisely so that you can stun two of these simultaneously, which is... Oh, okay, I'm not going to worry about those two red balloons. Like, they're not the work, biggest of worries. And actually, that one's in front, so we should deal with that one first. So, pop this and then use a concussive shell again once it's active. There we go and that's done that yeah that was a better attempt than the last one I don't know what happened with that single oh my god is a single ceramic gonna ruin us again okay thank goodness it doesn't goodness sakes a single balloon is all it takes i learned that from my prince of darkness playthrough that a single red shell that leaks is so annoying in this case a single ceramic but a ceramic is less embarrassing than a red balloon because all it takes is one flimsy dart from a dart monkey to pop a red balloon. Let's see, concussive shell there. Yeah, it's going to happen a lot. We're delaying the movement of speed of this as much as possible. And apparently I can't micro that well. Let's see, how far are we away to... Over okay, we're a thousand away, which is not that far at all. These ceramics should provide us with the money that we need. And we have it now, actually, so... Once we have the means of applying it, we're going to apply it. Going to apply it soon. Now, actually. And watch as we do not need to move this anymore because of the fact that we have more fire rate, which means we can pop these in this little radius here. Little square. But we will need to move the cursor when the BFPs come around. Let's see, the burning stuff is doing absolute wonders here, for goodness sakes. Let's see, can cast them again. Yep, and oh my god, there's some of them which are not happy customers. Burn the... Oh. <gasps> Come off it! Those pink balloons would have ruined me there. If I haven't said this before, I'm going to say it now. Shattering shells is the most difficult phase of getting to balloon incineration. Once we have balloon incineration, then we're all good. It's actually getting balloon incineration is the hardest part. Not the upgrade, but getting to the upgrade. So let's start this again. Hopefully this round will be a bit better. Okay, so we're going to just do it there. Just so we get some initial damage from the very start of the track. Let's see. They're gone and done and down and done. Diddy done did wit. I don't even know what I was saying there, but I'm so frustrated that random mumble jumble is coming out. Okay, that time was much more successful. For goodness sakes, I don't know what it was the last time around. Ooh, there we go. The burning stuff going to work there. Going from ceramics to yellows. Very surprising. Round 58. Let's see. We're very good up on... T you know what I think we need at this point in time? I think we're going to need some stalling and that's what we're going to provide for our friend oh. oh oh no um yeah i'm gonna do this at the beginning of the round actually i was thinking what we need now is to slow down the merv class balloons and i have just the trick well i will have the trick once i can afford it and evolve some moab glue and relentless glue 
along with some bigger globs. Yes, we will show no mercy this time around. Let's see, that's down there. Hopefully that will be popped soon. Yeah, that's under overclock, which is nice. Okay, so we've got mob glue now. Now we can slow them down even more so that then they can be popped. Oh my god, I, I overclocked the wrong thing. Oh, my bright side, at least they slow down even more. But for goodness sakes, this is not what we were after when doing this sort of thing. I hopefully we get enough shells in there to do this with. I didn't mean to overclock the glue gunner, but you know what? It's not the worst thing in the world to overclock because then we can stick these even sooner. Oh, uh, move the cursor over there. Yeah, I'm not going for black border. If this is my first time playing chimps, then... Well, firstly, I would not be attempting two Mega Pops. That's just the first thing. I would not be attempting two Mega Pops while also trying to complete my first ever game of Chimps, okay? That's just not how these things work, okay? So a combination of Overclock with the slowage of these will mean that any World Class Boons that enters the radius of this glue gunner will be having a hard time. Okay, so we need to move the cursor over here. Use a concussive shell whenever we can. Let's see. Just keep buying ourselves as much time as possible. Even when not in the radius of the glue gunner. Yeah, pressing tab is just so much more convenient than going over to the mortar monkey and manually trying to move the cursor from selecting select target. Like, pressing tab, which is like the targeting op option thing. It's just so much better. Okay, so relentless glue. So any glued balloons that are popped will burst out a means of stunning nearby unstuck balloons. Or any balloons for that matter, I think. Okay, so overclock again. Okay, round 61. So we should be in the clear now. I'm going to set you to strong actually so that you actually target the mild class balloons. Because it's not always the case that first needs to be the ones that are stuck. It's the strongest ones. Okay, so that's done that. Okay, they left, but they are being charged to death. Lovely. Oh, my. I pressed overclock again on the glue gunner. Although at that time, it was much more severe that we cast it onto the glue gunner rather than the shattering shells. Honestly, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with myself anymore nowadays. <laughs> no, we're still all good and in the clear. But we're going to have to do some more microing when it comes to these things. Because, well, the BFBs are not always going to be in a scenario where we can just pop them in this square. Like, despite... It, yeah, there we go. The fortification layer has been removed. And that actually adds pops to the Shattering Shells. It doesn't take them away. It adds it to its overall pop count. Which is a very nice feature. Because then it would be impossible to get two mega pops if the removal of the fortification layer also removes the means of getting those pops if the fortification layer was still intact so yeah i'm gonna keep my mouse over here for the time being so that i don't accidentally overclock the glue gunner again you also don't need to worry about too much to worry about the fortifications of certain balloons like zmgs we need to worry about but when it comes to zmgs we will not have to worry because of the fact that by the time we get to zmg we will be having the balloon incineration just barely but we will be able to get it okay so thanks to relentless glue and its stickage um, we're able to carefully pinpoint our cursor so that we are over the ceramic and still be able to hit it. Rather than trying to aim in front of the ceramic and then by the time the shell lands down, then it lands onto the ceramic. You can't just put your cursor over, let's say, this ceramic and expect it to hit. You gotta think ahead. Deal with these mobs first and then we'll go onto the BFBs. Deal with the fastest targets first, which are an imminent threat. And then go from there. Let's see. That's all done and good. Yep. The bunny stuff is clutch right now. So just deal with those two. Bunny stuff is clutch right now. With its ability to burn balloons outside of a radius of the explosion. So concussive shells are not 
four pops. They're there for stunning. And this was another reason why I prefer Striker Jones over Gwen for signal flare buffs. Not only does it buff the Mortar Monkey in more ways, but, and I'll say this, but we can also stun balloons. Whereas the Gwen abilities are very dangerous for a two mega pop scenario. Unless, of course, you're trying to get two mega pops with Gwen herself. But that is probably an impossibility of itself because of the limited amount of attacks that Gwen can do. Along with her big weakness to purple balloons. Okay, that's good. That's a little bit worrying. But still, nothing that we can't handle. The MVP of this run is not the explosions themselves, but the burning stuff itself. Like, that is what is dealing the damage. More BFBs inbound, but no worries. We can deal with this. Just like every other balloon that we've dealt with so far. Keep on going. The worst enemies that are in front of us are actually the BFBs like they're the ones to worry about the most but because we're moving slow we don't have to worry about them as much as these Moabs because of their pesky ceramics inside which could escape it almost escaped once if we didn't enter or didn't go back to the main menu Ooh, hello how are you doing okay so there we go round 68 has been adjourned just so many rainbows and so many of them if not all of them are being completely charged to incineration by these shattering shells round 71 ceramics against and no chance this time the shattering shells has done some majority of them lovely oh overclock ran out Oh, overclock running out at the wrong moment could be the defining factor in all this, which is not what we want. Let's see. Burn. Burn. Oh, just left with some reds. To be honest, I'm not worried about reds. Not one bit. At times, we're going to have to really slow down the game so we can concentrate and hit as many of these as possible while also following my own advice of using tab let's see oh some of the ceramics will not burn that's an issue because we rely on the burn for a lot of damage uh be in the center of explosion would be a better fit alternate outcome than being away from the explosion thank you very much probably in the center of the explosion would be very very welcoming let's see those go down oh pink balloons i swear are very scary in bone rice uh and a very oh that single ceramic could have been the difference yes at times do not be afraid to slow down the game slow than fast forward like at times you don't need to fast forward and in this case it's better to not fast forward if you really need to concentrate on where to place down those cursors Let's see, Moab has been dealt with, Ceramics inside also dealt with, Overclock applied, thank you, we really need the Overclock to continue to be applied for as many times as possible. Let's see now, where are we at with the pop? So, sometimes it would be better to try and spread out your victims so that they do not all suffer at the same time with the same amount of damage so that we can concentrate on the ceramics pieces by pieces but i suppose i can't even follow my adv own advice but that's okay always fortified ceramics no chance we do not need to fear your fortifications if we can just peel them off let's see should we be concerned about the fastest ceramics i'm going to say no actually because of the amount of times that we're hitting them and then from there being able to char them us so they're not a threat either completely destroyed or heavily damaged to a point where they're either red or blues let's see just another lobster into the boiling pan see and more puffer fishes into a boiling pan as well 
I wish one day Ninja Kiri would come out with a fish themed skin for the ZMG because that's the only one left that doesn't have it. Uh, puffer fish for Moabs, lobsters for BFBs, sharks for DTs, whales for bads, but nothing for the ZMG. Something like an octopus? A Cthulhu themed octopus? I know I'm being a little bit eccentric here, but we are in a game of balloons where monkeys are throwing darts in order to pop balloons. Anything is possible here. And I'll repeat it. Anything is possible. Okay, so there goes the ceramics and everything inside them as well. The burning stuff is so good. Can't believe how good the burning stuff is on this on this tower. The burning stuff is brilliant. Like it's really burning through like ceramics and stuff. Like I didn't expect that. Okay, so we need to really narrow down our targets so that we don't aim at everything all at once. Because sometimes keeping these BFBs as BFBs is good. Like we don't want to commit too much balloon genocide. Oh, the ceramics. The ceramics are getting away. We do not want them to get away. Get away, get away, get away. Not now. Okay, so... Yeah, let's do that. Let's spread them out just a little bit more. Let's focus fire on these. Let's do a concussive shell on the BFBs. It hasn't destroyed them, which is good. Sometimes spreading out your targets, especially when they're clumped together, is very important because then we can deal with them individually. Like, this would be very, very scary if we try and take down all of these balloons simultaneously. And we don't want that. We want nice, spread out targets. If we can do that. Yeah, round 75 is, can, be, can actually be quite scary. Not gonna lie. Uh, there's that. I know this seems very slow and it's going to be quite a long video, but I'm concentrating here. Let's see, what does that do? That doesn't pop them, which is good. Very good. Although they're about halfway across the track now, which is a little bit concerning. I think we could deal with the rest of these. Like, two BFBs are not going to be a problem. Watch as I regret it in a few seconds' time. Let's see, concussive shell. Let's group them up a bit more. Let's see. Oh, some of them are glued, which is nice. Oh, we don't have the benefit of... Oh, 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 oh. No, 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 no. I'm going to have to restart this round. I'm trying to experiment with something. Let's try just placing this here at the very start. And then any ceramics try and get instantly charred. Let's see, do Let's do that. Let's see how that goes along. Let's just do some initial damage to these BFBs. And then we'll go from there. But I think these mobs are going to be too scary for that to be a, sh a viable strategy. So we'll just do what we normally do best and just be at the very start. Be within this very square, the center stage of our strategy. Like, you're probably bored of me doing all these challenges on Resort. Doing all these videos on Resort. But it's just got, like, the almost perfect layout for a map in order to do these challenges on. Like... The majority of the pops will happen within this square here so that we can do all of our damage like that is incredibly ideal for something like this where you know balloons have a limited range balloons have a limited blast radius so towers have a limited range and towers have a limited blast radius you do not want every single benefactor to be outside of a comfort zone of sort because you kind of need a comfort zone in these games, in these scenarios, so that when it comes to popping stuff, you are able to control the scenario and be able to do things how you want them to be. You want to be able to stir the pot. You don't want these pesky things stirring the pot for you. Okay, so that's good. Oh my God, a single ceramic down there, but luckily it's, it's glued. It's slowed right, right down. Let's see. This is going much better than last time, by the way. I think that initial damage at the very start there was what we needed. Ooh, and that has come to adjourn. Let's see. Round 76 is just going to be an absolute cakewalk. Ooh, outside of his pierce count. That's really surprising. But we're done and dusted. Round 77. We've got 
four or five BFBs to deal with here. A tad problematic, but again, nothing that we can't handle. Oh, yeah, I think. Oh my god, they're all pop. Oh, this is gonna be a massive problem. They are all down to Moabs. I prefer some of them were kept as BFBs for speed's sake. Oh no, this might be bad. This might be a bad scenario. I don't want this many to be this stage. Uh, because sometimes there's too many ceramics. And sometimes to me, ceramics can exceed the pierce count of this particular tower. Let's see, stun it. Oh, no, 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 no. We're not doing this again. Oh, no, no. no I'm going to have to restart it. The ceramics are too tough. Welcome to hell, if you have not noticed already. Let's see. Yeah, we can show no mercy if we're able to. Okay, that's much better. Some of them are still BFBs, much better. As long as we don't target them by any means necessary, we should be okay. Even if they somehow get down to Moab class balloons, we'll still be able to deal with them quite okay. Okay, this is a good spot at the moment. Let's see. Oh, ceramics. Oh, come off it. Do not do this to me. Ceramics again. No! Really? Gotta do all that again because of a pink balloon. He must not escape! Finally, level 77, round 77 is completed. Now we can finally progress forward. The ceramics pose no threat. Oh, we've been trying this for another four runs. The other few, which I have not put into any kind of recording, I'm not going to show because I didn't record it, but I'm trying to practice to get to this point after past 77 and 75. And other times it's like, well, even like round 55, for certain sakes, a yellow balloon was about to leak. So yeah, that sums up this journey. I've been here for another two hours outside of recording trying to do this, but finally we're at a stage and where we are a bit more comfortable. Round 79 could be a bit of an issue, but we don't have to worry about that until the next round. Because guess what? That's round 79. This is round 78. Let's see. Keep going with this. Come on now. You can all be popped. Oh, dearie me. Yeah. Shattering shell de uh, regenifies balloons as well as the camification lies in whatever you want to call it. Uh, decamifying them, which I knew it would do, but not the, uh, the de regrow stuff, which is a bit of a mystery to me as to, like, how can it do that? Like, it can remove, um, remove shuttle, so, special balloon property, so, it also is fortified layers as well as regrows? I think that's probably what the game is trying to tell us, it's not just regrow, well, not just fortified, but also regrow, not just camo, but fortified and regrow. So you can remove all of those properties then, which is very, very handy. I never need that. Great, now I've got all these bunched up stuff here. We're only 1,600 away from the balloon scenario, but we still got to get those pops into a point where we can actually get them. And this is looking to be a very, very heavy RBE round. This is probably the most difficult round of this entire scenario because balloon incineration is a humongous step up in power oh dear me and if we got blue glue splatter then we wouldn't be able to get balloon incineration till past 80. we won't have enough firepower to deal with the zoom g at that point let's see stun those get that done another way don't know why but this feels more stressful than getting all seven paragons level 100 solo but because that doesn't require a huge amount of micromanagement 
in the same way that this has a huge amount of micromanagement. But the only micromanagement for Paragons is placing those totems down, which you can actually do by um, clicking off auto start. Also, I think. Okay, I thought that was going to get more pops in it would indeed otherwise entail because perishing potions are renowned for getting quite a lot of pops but i think that's just the fortified layer stuff which we preemptively deal with anyway so yeah there's that um oh no yellow balloons again you are the bane of me with this video it's not moabs it's not bfbs it's yellow freaking balloons i don't know why but over here is very satisfying because you're literally just incinerating the regrow rainbows it's the same but it's neither regrow or balloon in general so let's move this over here let's deal with this very first one and then go from there let's see <sighs> this is more micro intensive than the prince of darkness this is more micro intensive than anything just be true to be told, I dislike the micromanagementness of this particular tower in question. The biggest one you didn't require to micromanage as much simply because of the fact that the biggest one has such a huge blast radius that you don't have to worry about whereabouts everything was at any given point in time. It's just that, well, everything was within the blast radius, so why do you need to move the curse at any given point in time? I sound stressful because the balloon incineration or getting to a balloon incineration has been mighty stressful. Do not try and do this two mega pots for yourself. For goodness sakes, you're going to lose whatever sanity you have left. So what is going to be the frontmost BFB at this point in time? Is it that one there? Unless it is that one. Yeah, okay, that one rotates. So let's see now stun the others that would be necessary let's put the cursor down here so we don't accidentally pop these bfbs because we still need those kind of intact purely because of their movement speed okay let's deal with these ceramics some of them look like they don't get popped whatsoever okay good these ones are not burning which is a good sign I know this is quite boring, but I would like to do this. This will be very good if I can do this. Uh, do you me? Let's see. Overclock. Moab classes. Let's deal with these. A few groups at a time. Let's deal with that again with a concussion shell. Just to lay their movement as much as possible. Let's see. It just looks like some of them sometimes don't get burned as much, whereas others get incinerated almost immediately. Let's see, there's that. We're almost there with a blue incineration. Just need to deal with these last few BFBs and then we will be able to afford it. But these look very far along the track, which is quite worrying to say the least. Okay, there's that one dealt with. Uh, oh no, those are incinerated as well. Let's see. Uh, damn it. This looks like it requires a restart of some kind, unless I can deal with these promptly. No, no, no. This is too close a call. How are we going to deal with these? There's just simply too many BFBs on the track at any given time on round 79. Like, if we could somehow divide and conquer them, but once they're within the square, then trying to separate them out is going to be incredibly difficult. Unless we don't use the concussion shells. Yeah, no matter what I do, they're all just going to be clumped up together. So we might as well just accept our destiny and just go along with it. Okay. Keep targeting the fast, weak ones. They're the ones which will ensure our defeat, not the slow ones, but the what's inside the slow. Yellow balloons, again you are being an absolute bane of my existence with this particular video. One time pink balloons, the rest of them have been 
Yellows. Yellow balloons. Uh, come on now. We're only 700 away, but it feels like it takes forever to do this kind of thing. Let's done those. Can we deal with this? Sometimes it feels like the ceramics don't get affected as much, but maybe I should just have a bit more patience. Okay, they're quite well spread out, these last two. So, perhaps we can deal with these individually. If we can, that is. So, okay, that's good. Okay, that's brilliant, actually, because that was concussed a bit longer than these ones were. So, I think we should be able to do it this time around. Well, big word there is should. So just keep pressing tab and constantly readjust where the cursor is. And we're still a lames away. That's just great. 36 more money until we get balloon incineration. But this is going to be the best 36 I've ever earned in this entire video, I think. Let's see. Uh, nearly there now. Last little stretch. Okay, yes, we finally got it. We finally got the incineration. Now the rest of this should be very, very easy. See the ZMG? It has been completely charged into the nothingness. So let's just do that. With the help of Striker Jones, we are now nearly immortal. So our next gambit. Burma bro. Actually, we should just leave the incineration here. There's no micromanagement left needed. Just keep it there. And then just keep applying the overclock. And we are in the business. I'm sorry, Glue Gunny. You're going to have to put up with this heat. And at the moment, it's like 30 degrees centigrade. Thank you, Heat Wave UK shenanigans. Let's see. These are all going down so easy now, which is nice. No more fortifications. Um, ZMGs will still have their fortified status, though, so that's going to be very interesting. We we'll probably will move this occasionally, especially rounds which just consist of ZMGs. I mean, just waiting for them to come here would be very boring. But again, we don't want to be careless just because of this newfound power. 83 is dealt with. Overclock applied to the balloon incineration. Yeah, it's not balloon incineration itself is difficult. It's getting the balloon incineration that's difficult. Like, there's nothing more terrifying than trying to get somewhere and then thinking you're just short of the destination because there's some sort of arbitrary barrier that's stopping you from being able to get there. And that arbitrary barrier for me was just a lack of power from the shattering shells, even though the burning stuff has been an absolute blast to have. Let's see, around 85. Let's see, stun them so they're further in that place. Oh my god, they just instantly went from BFBs to ZM. So, BFBs to, um,. Moabs, not BFBs to ZMGs. You can you can tell how tired I am because I'm saying the wrong stuff multiple times. So BFBs. Firstly, their fortification status has been removed. I should have really thought that shattering shells. If it removes special properties, not only does it remove camo, but it also removes fortifications as well as regrows. Like I never thought that regrows were a factor in that. But I should have just looked at the description more thoroughly and thinking, yeah, that does that. I just didn't think it would be the case. I thought it did everything aside regrows. So, if you want to build up a regrow farm, do not pursue the shattering shells route. Probably the biggest one if it's quite far away from all of the action. But I would say that for regrow farms, whenever there's a mortar power gone, I would say that the middle path without using the ability is probably the best one to be honest let's see 88 zmg left yeah somehow these free play rounds just feel so much easier because of the climbing power that we have just gotten just look at all of them become instantly charred well there's you lot which are annoying but nonetheless yeah the relentless glue is kind of slowing things down 
but it's been incredibly necessary in order to do so like without this slowdown there wouldn't be enough time around this part of the square so this corner that corner that corner there wouldn't be enough time where the mob class balloons were hanging around there for oh my um yes i should keep this yeah i'm gonna keep this here because mainly of the ceramics so i think that the main weakness we have are ceramics so once we get the perma brew then the application of berserk brew and acidic mixture dip will be permanent and uh, the acidic mixture dip is what gives us bonus damage to ceramics but if we keep firing off all these shots then that's going to be very difficult also level 18 an additional 10 percent more to our attack rate so that's lovely 91 is done and dealt with 92 let's see what we've got down going on down here very very promising with all of these fortified mows removing their fortification property let's see yeah ceramics are going to be our main weakness here i'm not gonna lie let's see they're stunned keep them within the little square for just a little longer round 93 has some ddt's this removes the ddt like lead part of the aspect so all of their special properties are removed like lead is a special property in and of itself but i think the only balloon ever that it cannot remove special properties of is the dread balloon which is perfectly understandable because that's just a huge way of being able to circumvent certain weaknesses and uh remove its shield that it normally has by saying hey Let's just apply the, the balloon incineration on it because that removes all different kinds of properties with a shattering shell feature. And then just the overall damage overall with a balloon incineration that it has. 94 has been dealt with. Just fine. Let's see. Purple balloons. Ooh. Because we're now conjuring flames, the purple aspect might be a bit of an issue. But as long as the explosions keep happening, then the purple balloons will be popped. Let's see. Let's just stun those. We should be good. The overclock is in effect. I think if the overclock was in effect, then we might have a bit of a worse time with the BTs. Let's see, do that temporarily and then go there. And I keep repeating the same dialogue over and over again, but I'm literally so tired at this point trying to do this. Uh, anything goes at this point and it will make sense. Round 96, 1.4 million pops, that is excellent. The last three quarters will be within the next few rounds. Fortified ZMGs have a lot of pop to them. But unlike other enemies so far, we cannot remove a fortification layer off the ZOMG. Like, it's just not possible. So we have to do this the old hard fashion way of just taking down all of its HP. I think it would actually be very counterintuitive if Merv Cross Balloons had a health bar on them. Because I think it is better this way that the mail class balloons have some kind of damage visuals on them to indicate the status of their health so 25% HP removed 50% 75 and then obviously 100 is down to the child layer child layer being like um, BFB from ZOMG for example so oh Permabrew, I've completely forgotten about that. So what can we use for our final tower? Hmm. We could put down some more. Oh, oh dear. Um, are we going to be okay? Yeah, I think we're okay. Some of those ceramics gave us a bit of a fright. Right, let's get that. And then let's see what we end up around. Yeah, it removes the fortification layer off of the DDTs, which is lovely. So what can we do with four thousand? Not really a huge amount, really. Hmm. 
What about a... We could get an embrittlement by the end of all this. Let's see, and that won't take away too many pops. Oh, we should actually be micromanaging this, really. Like, uh, this, will be, this will make it easy, but it's just the fact that we can do damage even sooner. I'm really tired otherwise. I would have placed him as Cursor of at the start of the map. We can just spam where the flames are, because the flames last for quite some time, which is nice. Let's see... Overclock is running out. Oh, down here. I forgot about that. Let's see. I don't think we could have done call to arms with Berserker Brew. Or with uh, Perma Brew, sorry. Let's see. Overclock. That should be good. Oh, we're getting very close. Come on, bad. Get down already. Get down already, you purple behemoth. There we go. Ooh. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Not so rap. Oh, that was so scary when I saw that regrow ceramic. <laughs> that was so scary because they are the worst aspects of all this. Let's see. Um, oh my. Uh-oh. Uh yeah, I'm going to have to restart this round. I was not concentrating there. I'm just trying to think of what we could do with the rest of this money, really. Like, there's not a lot that we can do. So just for a little bit of extra damage, we're going to go plutonium reactor. And we're going to put the cursor at the start of the map and we're going to micromanage it this time around. Thank you, Flare Balloons. For all the torture that you've put yourself through, you're going to finally do this and you're going to prove to the, ro the world sorry, that Balloon Incineration 2 Mega Pops is possible. Because apparently there are no videos on YouTube showcasing this hallmark of an achievement. Let's see... Okay, this is going a bit better this time, which is good. Get into town on this one. Yeah, it's doing barely any pops, but once the bad layer goes down, then it will start actually getting some meaningful pops. And also do good damage against ceramics as well. Like, this thing is very good against ceramics. Well, well, it's better against ceramics than the, um, the other things are. Notice how the concussion shell strikes the strongest balloon, but yet it categorizes DDTs as being stronger than ZMGs, which literally have more HP. It's simply because of their properties. Alright, we're done, aren't we? Yeah, we're done. And we've got 2 million and 22,152 pops. That's great. <laughs> I should be happier than I am, but I've been trying to do this for absolutely ages now and it's mainly been round 77 and 79 which have been sorry round 75 and 77 sorry that have been an absolute bane to me like yellow balloons no joke are the biggest enemy here and ceramics later on because for some odd reason the balloon incineration is no better against ceramics than the shattering shells are like, balloon incineration is primarily for Moab class balloons. And that is that. Balloon incineration, two mega pops. Achieved. Obviously, we're going to get zero. It's entirely supportive. Biker bones, 16,000. A lot of those are from stuns, but that was been the main purpose of it when it comes to attacks. But its main purpose has been to buff the Mortal Monkey so that this can be possible. But it also allows for early rounds for us to be able to hit Black Balloons and Zebra Balloons. Otherwise, if we place any other hero down, if we don't place Striker Jones down, then what we're literally doing is useless with the Mortar Shells against Black Balloons and Zebra Balloons because it will not pop them whatsoever. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what um, what tower you'd like me to try and do next in this quest and stuff like that. And okay, nothing new there then. I've got a gold border for uh, Super Monkeys when it comes to Insta. So I was hoping for a golden chest there, but alas. 
So what tower would you like me to see do next when it comes to the two mega pop scenario? Do not try and recommend me to do artillery battery and pop and all. Even though it does more damage to bands than it would otherwise. I'm not doing pop and all. Like, I don't think that would be possible because it just does not have the damage potential. But then again, I thought of that with an incineration because of a lack of damage that shattering shells would otherwise have, or therefore lack of. So, pop and all is cheaper, but it just, just, just no, okay? Even though that actually circumvents um, black balloon weaknesses that the artillery would have, but also does extra damage to ceramic, so that's one positive, right? Who knows? Thank you so much for watching, and take care of yourselves. Hope you enjoyed the video.